Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Well, all the stuff from working on the lost and still on the bench, so I thought grab another one. This one's a Briggs. Um, it's got a pretty cool exhaust system on it. <laughs> Somebody has put a water valve on it and then cut the handle off. I can't say I ever seen one like that. It did direct the exhaust away from the gas tank though. <laughs> Probably was on a mower or something. That looks like it was a thing to keep the belt on. No spark plug. Spark plug wire is pretty much history. Uh, I think I got it at the yard sale. It says six dollars on it. Oh, it does turn over. That's a good sign. Other than that, looks like it might be pretty much all there. Air cleaner. Have to see what the uh, inside of the gas tank looks like. Well, I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers for that. And we'll see if she's got any oil in her. There she goes. Real goo down there. Probably some nice, nice stuff in that tank. Flashlight. Well, no goo, it's dry. Looks like there might have been a little bit of moisture in there, but overall, looks much better than I expected. Not going to take much to clean that up at all. That's a good thing. So, like a giant bolt. Yeah, it's right up full. So these ones that have been sitting forever in a day, um, what I like to do for them is take them and and they got oil in them, turn them right upside down, like so, and that coats everything in there. And it's been sitting a long time. And when you got the gas cap off, it also lets a lot of rust out of the gas tank. <laughs> So, I think we're going to see about getting that off of there. And I'll just screw everything to be adequate. Yep. Just for that one. longer so I can get a better grip. Now there's two Phillips and another short one. There's a nice one.
Okay, there's that part. I wonder how cooperative that's going to be. Oh, lucky. Probably brass, probably water. That's going to go in the scrap brass. Someday if I need to melt some brass. Put in there. Okay. Now, truck. And... I guess Is that gone? It's one nice thing about these old jobs. They, they didn't solder them on because you don't want to heat that because it'll travel back in there and mess up the insides. Not sure. Oh, no spark plug. I was going to say the compression doesn't feel so good and it still doesn't. Let's take the head off and take a look. See. Not an impact, that's a drill. Some place there's an impact down here. There it is. Not directly. Hit the gasket. Which I don't think is going to happen. Nope. Sheesh. I'm thinking it looks like a homemade thing. Head gasket. Alright. And we have a... Uh, both valves are stuck open. Alright, so it looks like we're going to take this one all the way apart. So we got a little engine show to go to this morning. It's just a local thing. And I'm waiting for guy to get here so I think it's just about time so we'll resume this after the show okay back from the engine show wasn't a whole lot there um, not a lot of people either 
hopefully next year it'll be a little better because of this virus stuff. So I think I'll get this flywheel off of here. And if I remember right, these are left hand thread, so Well, looky there. I don't know if anybody noticed, but there's a fin missing here, and there's one missing over here. So I wonder if somebody broke one, and then they broke one off across them with the balance it, or whether it just happened to be. But should still work okay. There's the key. He looks all right. Pretty nice and clean in there. So I think I'll pull this one all the way down. Um, so I think I can leave that all intact. Actually, I'll just take these four bolts out and uh, take the bottom off. I'll take this cover off here. So we can get at them valves. We'll take them out, get them all cleaned up, and take a look at the seat and the valve faces. Let's see what kind of shape they're in. I better get a socket for that or else it's going to mess it up. Studs coming in now. Yep. And there's a little shield here. And then there's a spring and a um, yeah, breather. Crankcase breather. And that whole stud come out, so we'll have to get that nut off of there and get that back in there because that holds that breather thing in there. So when we reassemble it, we'll have to have that right. Uh, I guess next I'll get the oil out. I don't think you guys want to watch that. Okay, got the oil out of her. Let's see what the oil sump looks like. It's one thing about these old Briggs, is they sure are easy to work on. Must be a fine threaded one. Should have put an extension on the impactor. Holy mackerel. Yep, fine thread and lots of them.
the right tool for the job here. One gasket. The gasket didn't survive. <laughs> All but one little spot. Okay, so here's what we got. Not terrible, like some of them. Probably if this thing was warmed up, probably most of that would come out of there. Oh, we'll just set that aside for now. And looking inside, looking pretty good in there. Okay, now well, let's get this uh, backing part off. It looks like. Seven sixteenths, which is already out here someplace. Alright, maybe. these backing plates they get kind of fragile so you don't want to use uh, this size hammer <laughs> just use the back side of a screwdriver tapper Stuck. I think there is only four bolts. Yeah. the big hammer but we will just be very gently and stay right up close to the there because I want to get this one really nice and clean. Uh, now let me, uh, you guys aren't going to want to watch all of this. It's taking forever to get that off there without ruining it. So I'm going to shut you down. I'll bring you back when I get her off. Well I uh, monkeyed with this quite a bit and she isn't coming loose. So I pulled the rod cap off, pulling the piston out, and none of the rings are stuck, but look at there, they're all right in a line. Not supposed to be like that. And I'm going to put this cap back on the same way it came off.
Okay, now what I thought I might do to turn this upside down, I thought if I tap on the end of the crankshaft, it comes out that way anyways. And there's quite a bit of bracing on the inside of that, and I won't be putting any pressure on this really thin stuff. So maybe that'll break it loose and then it'll come out of there. Yep, I can see. I can see light. Probably a quarter inch in there. Still doesn't want to come. That's strange. Yeah, we'll try tapping some more. There she comes. There. Crankshaft to come out of there. I'm going to tap that back in. By the way, this is a brass hammer, so I'm not doing any damage to anything. I'm going to clean that up a little bit before I shove it on through there. Okay, cut the crankshaft out. Looks like it's good shape. So now we're down to the camshaft, which I don't think I'm going to disturb. And we got these stuck valves yet. That's the main reason for tearing it all the way down. So I'll see if I can tap those down at all. Yeah. Probably could have freed them up, but I kind of want to see what shape they're in anyway, so. Now we can get in there and press the spring, and I'm thinking that these have little pins on them, if I remember right. No, oh, that, the valve come back up. Well, I'm not gonna not gonna be able to do this so you guys can see it, but there's pins in there to hold those bell springs in place. So I gotta get them turned a little bit, compress the spring, pull the pins out, and then the bells will come out. Okay, I thought I'd try to get a shot so you guys could see what I was talking about those pins. I got my uh, bell spring compression tool got the spring collapse and you can see the little pin and I got a magnet hopefully I'm gonna <laughs> pull that pin out with it and then there's the the pin put that over here in the tray now we should be able to, that valve's a little stiff, but get in there and push that valve up. And now it's screwed out a little bit too fat. So here's a little skinny one. See if we can get in there and get it started. Yeah, 
here's the spring. There's the keeper, someplace there. <laughs> and that little pin goes right across there. That's what holds the valve in. And there's the valve. Yeah, it looks like it's a good thing I pulled it apart. It's going to need ground. So do the same thing with the exhaust valve. I got the valves out and took them over on the wire brush and cleaned them up. Okay, uh, this is what this one looks like. Let's see intake. And here's the exhaust. Exhaust doesn't look terrible. The intake's got some pits in it. So I'll take them over on the grinder and see if we can uh, save it. If not, I'll have to dig through my stuff see if I got another one. Okay, brought you over here to the valve grinder. Something I don't use very often. Um, but when you do want it, it's nice. Just put the stem in the chuck here. And snug it up. And we'll just check and make sure clearances are going to be all right. Okay. Turn the machine on and then I'll crank this out and it'll bring the grindstone up to it while this is turning and it'll grind it. And you can set the angles uh, by loosening this and one back here and you can change the angle on that. Some are 30 degrees, some are 60, some are 45 so you can change that but I got it all set up. gonna be able to get sighted in on it or not. That's that that was the bad one. Looks like it uh, come out okay. Oh no touch up the exhaust valve. Exhaust valves are made out of, of different material tapers because you didn't see very many sparks coming off of that one. That's nice and even all the way around too. So now, um, let me see, let me turn you over just this a little bit if I can. And what I'll do next is because because we ground some off of here it's going to make the the clearance down at this end too tight so what i'll have to do is determine how much and then 
the valve comes back over here and, and let's see it's been a while since I run this no it goes up here like so and then you use that to grind the end off to get your clearance and there's a fine adjustment on it but I'll just do that I won't show you guys um, it's kind of confined back in here where I have this so I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to get the camera in here but hopefully if none of you guys ever seen valves ground that's how they do it yeah I got that homemade head gasket dug off of there I think it was like a uh, regular paper type gasket material and they had it saturated with that Permatex, that brown stuff and uh, you can see here looks like they tightened the head bolt so tight they actually pulled the threads just a little bit so before I'm done with this I'll take a, a file and run over that and get all those down but anyways we got to do these valve seats next this intake one's pretty rough looking I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not it's pretty pitted I don't know if flashlight will help or not but I'm gonna go hunt up my valve seat stuff hopefully I got something that'll go that small pretty sure I do I think I've done one before now I have a, a Sioux block refacer but it's mostly for like automotive stuff and the stones are quite big so these little engines are sometimes a problem but I found this this is the uh, pilot and this is the actual cutter and this drops down in the valve guide maybe it's this end yeah and then this will set on there and I'll put this in the drill like so I'm just going to give it just a little squirt of something <laughs> and then we'll just take a look see I guess I'll have to wipe it off. Can't tell with all the oil on there. Yeah, looks like Looking better, but we still got some pits. It's coming, but it sure doesn't work as well as a grindstone does. Uh, give me a minute. I'm going to go do some more research, see if I got something that might work better. Well, I went and dug out my Sioux uh, block refacer, and I found a valve guide. Well, not a valve guide, but the stem that goes in the valve guide. That'll go in there, and then this is the the stone and I dressed it there's a, a diamond dresser you put this on and it turns and gets the angle right and you start out with a nice new stone that way and we're going to put a couple of drops of oil on this goes in there like 
like so. And then Put any pressure on there hardly at all. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good. And we'll do the same. This one shouldn't take much at all. So that's all there is to it when you <laughs> do it the easy way. You can see where it did, did the grinding. You can't feel anything there. That should work again fine for another one. So the next uh, is going to be yeah, see there's no clearance there now between grinding the valve and the um, seat. We have to get our clearance back. Well, that one still has some because it's, it's tight. And then we'll have to lap them in. So, if I take the cam out, probably would be easier, but I didn't think I was going to disturb that. So... I'm going to try to do it without. But I think that's enough for today. I'm going to get the valve clearance set. And I know I showed you on my valve grinder how to do the ends, but I'm going to do it over here on the belt sander. It's just a lot easier, I think. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 8 on the intake and 12 on the exhaust. So the exhaust is about 8 right now so we need to take about four what I'm going to use is the V-block I can just hold it, hold it on there keep it nice and square that way and I'll just eyeball the square uh, the other way One more trip over to the belt sander, and I think I got her. Here's the intake. Just a little bit of resistance there with eight thousandths. And the exhaust is 12, and the same, just a little resistance. So uh, now I'm going to go uh, get some belt grinding compound, and we'll get these lapped in. Okay, got my grinding compound. There's a fine in the course. We're going to go with a fine because beanies were just ground. It's already pretty smooth. I got a little spring I'm going to put under the valve. That'll set in there. That's so that when I'm turning it, I can lift up on it and it kind of rearranges the grit. Then you get a you just get a better grind that way when that grit gets rearranged some. So, and I've got uh, a nice uh, thing to turn the valves with, I'll show you here in a minute. So we're going to put just a little bit of this compound on there. Yeah, just get the fingers out a lot easier. Try not to get any on the stem. You don't want to grind the stem. 
and I've got this old school bell seeder and you just turn it and it goes back and forth and these valves have two holes in and I made the piece to fit and it's just held on with a cotter key so we're just going to stick that in those two holes and we turn this crank and it goes back and forth lift it up once in a while Oops, getting a little carried away there. Well, I'm not very good at this anyway. Them holes aren't very deep though. So it shouldn't take, take much being that they're already ground. And what we're looking for is a little... Okay, come on, focus. <laughs> we're looking for a ring around there, all the way around nice and even. And I can see that. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera or not, but there is a ring there. I'm going to Give it just a little more. It looked nice and even all around, so we should have a good valve seal. And this engine doesn't seem like it has any wear anywhere. Those valve guides and everything are nice and tight. It shows no signs of wear on the, the valves themselves. call the uh, intake good and I'm going to do the same to the exhaust. Now they're lapped I'm going to check that clearance once more. I don't think that lapping really would have changed it much but nope, we're good there on the intake and the exhaust is just a little resistance too so we're good to go on the valve parts. So next, um, this rag that I've been using here, I wiped all that grit off with it, so it's going in the garbage because we don't want to contaminate anything else with it. And I think, well, I do have one more thing that I want would like to. And that's going to be see what the ring gap is. Let's see if there's any before I turn this over. There's a chamfer on the top of this, and it was on the top, so I'll make sure we put that back on the same way. No ridge or anything on this engine. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not. But the ring gap is looks really good. Let's see if I can get a light on it. Maybe if I shine it up through from this side. No. <laughs> but there you can see the ring gap. So this engine's in good shape as far as wear goes. So the next thing is give all this stuff a bath, get it cleaned up, and then we can start some reassembly, I think. The only other thing to check out is going to be the carbon gas tank, and we can do that later. Okay, I've been cleaning some parts up and squirting a little paint on them and all that good stuff. And 
Put the carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner, got it cleaned up. Um, the pickup tube, original one, was uh, not any good. Uh, supposed to be a little check ball in the bottom of these. And I didn't have one that was any good either. So I've got a bunch of these off the newer stuff that I've saved. And you cut that tube off, the brass tube, and then cut this tube off so it comes out the right length. And then I slip, uh, well there's a little piece of that uh, gas hose, and then there's a bigger piece that couples them together. And turns out pretty good. So that's what I did with that. The gas tank, it didn't look too bad. Um, after I started cleaning it up, some holes appeared. Um, let me try something. Maybe I can show you. I'm going to point this camera towards the light. hold the gas tank up in front of it. There. Looks like a lace curtain when you get it up close. So, I uh, went up and looked through my stash and I found uh, one in good shape to replace it. Uh, this one looks good inside and out. Nice and solid. And something I've never seen before, it has, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but there's like a decal here. It says starting instructions. Now why would they put instructions right where the muffler goes? I don't get it. <laughs> but it says close choke by pushing tab in. This tab is located under the air cleaner. Pull rope with quick steady pull. Open choke. Not sure what it says. A fraction of an inch, whatever it is, I'm not sure if it's a half an inch or eighth of an inch or what. Um, pull over again. Continue. To open choke as the engine warms up. Important, do not tamper with factory. Needle valve when servicing. <laughs> Neat. It's a shame to destroy that, but I'm going to get this cleaned up and give it a squirt too. I'll be back in a bit. And while the paint's drying, missing this cover uh, goes around the fins. And went up and robbed one off another one. So I'm going to use this piece of sheet metal to try to create one of my own. I'll just mark it out like that. And cut her out. And Form it. Mm -hmm. We'll have one. That's going to be my next project.
and they should be able to tip that like so. Pencil didn't do a very good job, but you can see I got to cut a little notch there. Cut this out, an oblong hole, and then uh, fold it right there. Shouldn't be too difficult, and then form it so it fits the fins. Okay, got the new part created. It's better on the outside and the inside. But I tried it on the, the engine and it seems like it fits okay, so now we'll put some paint on her. And I'm going to check out this points and stuff. I got my helper here, Mr. Boots. He's going to give me a hand. I'm looking for some mouses. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, looking for some mouses. All right, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Okay, come on. We're gonna have to clear the work area. Say goodbye to everybody. There you go. All right. Well, let's get the points clean. Uh, got this piece of paper here. We'll just turn that through there. Yeah, they look all right. So let's check the condenser. To do that, we'll just pop the wire off here. One goes on the ground, and on there, charge here about three or four times, nothing, nothing, nothing. Looks like we're going to put a new uh, condenser in there. Sounds like I got a company. Okay, my company was my son. He uh, works for one of the tree companies that work with the uh, electric company. And we had that power outage the other day. Um, this actually wasn't related to my power outage, but there was a lot of power outages in the area. But anyways, uh, where the tree come down, took the electric line down, and the electric line went to the ground and laid there and fried. And this is what it does to rocks and stuff. Turn it into glass. Thought so maybe you guys might like to see that. Hopefully you can see it good enough. So, I found a, another capacitor, and if we charge it, hit the discharge, we get a nice jump. So, we're going to install that in there. I'm going to put it back together, and when we assemble it, hopefully everything's going to work. Uh, 
doing this here is a lot easier than doing it on the engine. So I'll get that back together and then I think I'm about ready to assemble. I found, went through my gasket collection and I found one for the uh, uh, valve cover thingy. Found a new head gasket. Found a new oil sump gasket. Yeah, I think we're going to reuse this gasket. It, it seems good. So I think we're, we're in good shape for reassembly. Now I'm going to start the reassembly putting the valves back in. Um, one disadvantage of not taking the camshaft out is that I have these springs compressed as far as they'll go and I can't get them in there because the valve lifters are in the way. So I'm going to have to uh, weasel them in there by hand and then get this on there and put the pins in. And that's going to be a, a struggle <laughs> because I've been there and done that. So, uh, I'm not going to make you guys suffer through it with me. It's, it's pretty simple. I just got to get the springs on there, get the valves in, and get those little pins back in. But sometimes it makes you say bad things. And I wouldn't want you guys to hear me say something bad. So, I'm going to shut you down until I get that done. Okay, I wrestled with a couple of screwdrivers and about 10 minutes I got them, got them in there and they, uh, they're working. I checked the clearance, it's good. So this is the uh, stud that, that come out that shouldn't have. I'll have to go find another fine thread nut like this, double nut it so I can screw that in. I'll be back in a Okay, I got her double nutted. got this uh, crankcase breather. I cleaned it all up. It, uh, well, there's a little disc. There's a gasket. And then the uh, body. A little uh, disc. And then this top piece. And then this spring sets right in there. These two little notches will drop down in this Hole, which goes down in the crankcase. <laughs> okay. Get one to drop in, why won't the other one? There. And the spring goes up against that bolt that we just put in and holds it in place. Then we got this splash shield, I guess that you call it. And it only goes in one way. And then there is a gasket. And there's a valve cover. But now, I'm going to get that all back off of there. Because <laughs> I was interested in showing you guys how it goes together. And I didn't. I put lubrication on the valve stems when I put them in. But I always like to 
because it'll take a while for any lubrication to get up in there. Okay, now I can put it back together. This little breather was headed that way. shaft and we need to find a timing mark sure if we got a tooth with a side knocked off no yeah maybe that's it right there See what we got on the camshaft for a mark. Okay, we got a mark right there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It's right there. Assuming that's the timing mark. Let's see how we do here. I think it moved. Yep, it's off a tooth. Okay, I'll try to get that so you guys can see it. Um, it's right there. The little dot on the crank is lined right up with a mark on the cam. Piston in. Let's see. I think she goes like that. Gotta do the same with this. Get her lubed up good. That's the trouble with making an all nice and pretty paint job before you put it together. <laughs> you don't want it on the top. Okay, we want to get the rings so that they're not all lined up. for the cylinder. Get that lipped up. Let's see, final side. Yeah, 
And I'm going to attempt to put this in without using a ring compressor. That one went. Where's my gap? Ouch. No better than that, too. Okay. There we go. A little more lubrication. Same here. Now let's see what do you do, get the impact out and tighten them up? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, we'll just snug them up like that for now. Okay. Here's the ratchet. And then those sockets down here on the Now there's torque specs for these, but I've never torqued one. To, oops, wrong one. Correctly. <laughs> Anyways, I always just reasonably tighten them, and I've never had one fail on me yet. Okay, now we have a couple of box right here that we have to fold over against a flat spot on those hexes in order to keep them from loosening. There's one. There's the other. Okay, now I'm going to give her a little more lubrication. And now yeah, let's turn that so that this is not sticking. Now we're ready for this backing plate. The lubrication again.
Looks like the holes are lined up there. And Got one more in some place. There it is. Well, the old uh, camera battery died while I was tightening them up. I got them all tightened up and uh, everything still moves nicely. There's no end play. So we're good to go there. So next is the oil sump, I guess. Don't see any other pieces that ought to go in there. <laughs> okay, we got a fiber washer that's got to go on there. And this side. Just a normal looking bolt. I'm not sure why they made these so long, but... Okay, oh yeah, while I was uh, putting these bolts in, this capacitor turned out to be in the way, so I had to remove it, so I had clearance for the socket. So I gotta get that back in place. Okay, now I think we're ready for uh, a key. No, we're not. I gotta make up a spark plug wire. Then we can see if we got any spark. So let me go find some wire and get that done, and I'll be back. Okay, I got spark plug wire on her. Threw the flywheel on it. And we got spark. So I'm going to pull this back off, put that tin cover back on, get that all put back together, and then uh, put the head on, I guess. Yeah, both camera batteries died, so I got one charged up again. 
so I got everything put together. Uh, you didn't miss nothing. It was all easy stuff. Just the head and gas tank, muffler. Put oil in it. Boy, she's got good compression. And I haven't put any gas in it yet. So we'll see if she's going to go. Said to push that in. <laughs> I gotta find an air cleaner. Yeah, I had an awful time not squirting gas in it when I got it together enough to try it, but I held off. I think I heard a pop. About half choke up. I told you or not, uh, the first, this plate was messing, it has a tag on it, so we don't know for sure what model it is. I think it's a 5S. And let's put look serial up and see what year it was. But on the flywheel, there was a date of 51. And on the backing plate, there was a date of 50. So it's probably a, a 51. guys know much about these, but those carburetors weren't the greatest. Depends on how much gas is in the tank, how well they run. <laughs> I think she's going to be a good one. I know it's been kind of a long video, but if you guys enjoyed it, uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. See you next time.